Hello family, how are we doing tonight? Welcome to the Sabbath Sundowner with Life Matters on Adele's Rosgo One TV. I'm your captain, your guy, Caleb Mumanyi Mungesu. Thank you so much guys for continuing to rock with me. Our goal here is always to be the best versions of ourselves. Bravo to everyone that made it to service today. And for those who didn't for one reason or the other, whether it was intentional, unintended, we have, uh, you, you, we, you got our prayers, we got our prayers with you, and we hope that this coming Saturday, you want to get time and the commitment and the energy to attend service. Sometimes people blame others and uh, throw words to them for failing to attend services, but the battles that each one of us fight, only God and us knows. Now, before we get into our dialogue today, uh, we want to do some housekeeping, and you know how we do it. We want to check uh, who has joined us, and if you've done, then go ahead and give us that like. Uh, it means a world to us, and at least it signifies that we are together. And for those who are watching the show live, you can drop your thoughts in the comment section. Where did you worship today? How was the worship experience? What did you learn from the fellowship? Any observations you made on your way to church during a church service? And even on your way home, because this, this, is a, this is a space for us to listen to one another and to learn from one another. Of course, I will be giving uh, my view, I'll be sharing my thoughts, my experiences, and mine uh, began yesterday. Now, let me head on to the page. Let me see if we got anyone we got anyone who has joined us for the show please if you if you can get me drop a comment there uh, tell me how you're finding the the audio sound if you need um, me to make some adjustments if you know get me clear this is the time to do that remember you can go ahead and share this show on your timeline in your groups of course with relevant audience all right let me see um let me see how we're doing on this other side of the coin awesome awesome ah, this is really quick guys geoffrey bosiri is saying i'm geoffrey bosiri watching live from karaoke town thanks man you're saying enjoyed my sabbath at itangi sda amasege district Thank you so much, brother, for rocking in with us, man. Salute to you. And who else is in here? Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, all right. I'll be going through the comments from time to time as they come in. Now, we get into the show. I hope you want to like this. I got a collection, collection of some goodies. Yesterday was 1st July, and as my custom is, I normally get some time in the afternoon to go around town and do some shopping one or two. Now, yesterday, I boarded a matatu to town. I sat in seat number one. There was some elderly man in seat 1X, and we had the matatu driver in his seat all of us strangers and the journey seemed normal until the driver broke the silence now there was a truck that overtook us and it had a loose tarpaulin canvas for those who don't know tarpaulin canvas it is the waterproof 
heavy duty material that is used to cover goods at the back of the truck. Then the driver mentioned something that this truck guy, does he know that he may end up paying lots of thousands to the police? Now for those who are drivers, you know that when you are on the road, the number plate is supposed to be visible, the light indicators at the back are supposed to be visible. Now the loose tarpaulin canvas had covered that section of the truck. And then as the conversation began to grow, all of a sudden, the truck came to a halt. It was on a gentle sloping hill. We were wondering what's happening. The road seems clear. Only to peep through the window and learn that there is a motorcyclist who was trying to um, make his way onto the road. Now he was coming um, towards our opposite direction. Then the motorcyclist brought another conversation. Now being the youngest of the two, uh, of, of the three, I had to hold my horses and hear what the big boys are saying. The motorcyclist had tried to, uh, was carrying, was carrying uh, bales of hay. There were around 10 of them. And a bale of hay, minimum in Kenya, is usually 11 kilograms. It could be 18 and over. What had happened as the guy was trying to get onto the road, one of the bales of hay lost its position and it brought the entire stack of hay, bales of hay, uh, they, they spilled over onto the road. Now, this is, uh, that is the reason why the truck came to a sudden stop. And then the man seated uh, right next to me, I think he must have been in his uh, 50s. Then he was like, indeed, God protects his people. Um, that was not all. Finally, we got to town. And by the way, the motorcyclist was not hurt. We thank God for that. It is not a good thing. It is not, there's no pleasure in witnessing people get harmed. Finally, we got to town. Everybody headed different directions for their business. Now, for those who are aware, we are in quarter three. And I went over to the ABC the same yesterday to get a copy of my lesson start guide. Now, I usually prefer the three in one, but yesterday they were not in stock. So I took the teacher's edition. It could still serve uh, my purpose. Then there's this gentleman over the counter who is doing the sales. And there's this other madame uh, behind the counter as well who receives the payment and gives change to the buyers. So I hand him money and he gives me the teacher's edition guide. And then the ABC was a bit packed. I think people were in a rush to buy lessons for this quarter. Then this man with a smile on his face, I think he looked, he looked um, late 20s, they're almost my age mate. Then he looked at me, smile on his face. He was, he was uh, heavily bearded and he, he was in a hood. Then his teeth well shaped. The man looked at me, looked at me, smiled and said, make sure that you read. So I told him I'll make sure that I read. 
we smiled, we smiled, we giggled, and then I left. I headed over for um, another another matter uh, in the supermarket. Then my first stopover was oh first let me appreciate the soldiers the soldiers at the entrance those guys do a commendable job you can imagine they're standing there uh, checking us ensuring that uh, our safety is in place of course we, we all know you and i know that a hundred percent of our safety is in god's hands but these guys god uses these guys to ensure that uh, we have the protection we need now I'm about to go past them. I go, I stand there. They do their check. And then I had my bag, a small bag on my back uh, that I used to carry a few electronics. You know, instead of putting your keys, maybe your wallet, your phones inside your pockets, and you be looking like a mad person. So it's good if you can get a small bag. So I had my small bag on the back carrying all those items then the female soldier asked me what do you have uh, in this small bag i tell her i'm carrying keys and and uh, some a few electronics then he gets me a sticker places it on my bag so that the staff is not gonna confuse that the bag i'm carrying i've uh, got it from the uh, supermarket then I headed over to the bookshelf. I like visiting the bookshelf every time I get time. Uh, every time I, every moment I have some spare time, I like stopping by the bookshelf, checking uh, which book is uh, which book is new here, and also finding, uh, uh, trying to check whether I can find a book to carry home then on the first bookshelf i didn't get anything then i proceeded to another bookshelf that is uh, um on the second floor and then there's this title it was uh, a title of a book written by a canadian army officer who was in rwanda during the 1994 Rwanda genocide. Let me get you the exact title of the book. It is called Shake Hands with the Devil. It has a subtitle, The Failure of Humanity in Rwanda. Yeah, he was the Lieutenant General Romeo Dalier. The title was not fascinating so much. It was attractive, but it was not uh, that fascinating. No, shake hands with the devil, even yourself, if you come across such a, a book, you're most likely to have a glimpse. Then it was sealed. I wanted to have, I wanted to check a few of the pages inside, but it was sealed. You know how they seal those books, especially the imported books. Now, the only section I could access was the bar cover. So I headed, I, I turned the book around and then some cool stuff on the back cover you know with the title shake hands with the devil you could expect nothing so good to come out of that book but behind the book cover in his words this general general romeo delier writes that while in rwanda i met the devil i saw him i shook hands with him and I experienced him. And part of the writing read, uh, this general was so depressed when he was in Rwanda. Reason, he tried to ask for support because he was in a position to intervene and help stop the war. But he never got the support he needed. He never got, he needed two kinds of support. Men, that's the workforce, the armed force he also needed the weaponry to help stop the war but he did not 
Now here comes what interested me most. This general says that because he saw and experienced and shook hands with the devil, he knows the devil exists. And if the devil exists, then even God exists. I think this was an amazing statement. Now, we'll come back to that. That is the basis of our brief dialogue tonight. Then I went on, uh, I, I went on to check around what is new in the spaces. Then I headed on to the food shelves. I like seeing what is selling on the food shelves. There are some shelves that were, that initially in this supermarket were reserved for greens. You could find maize there, you could find peas, you could find all sorts of uh, greens. This time around, there are only apples there and the rest of the spaces, they were full of juices and sodas. And I was like, oh, what the hell is going on here? But you know, you're not gonna shout in the supermarket but deep down, you know, something is not right here. I don't know. I don't know why they stopped selling the vegetables and the greens. Firstly, not that I was a, a fan of uh, purchasing greens from the supermarkets. No, I usually go to the farmer's market. That's where I prefer because you could get uh, much fresh uh, products at competitive prices compared to what you'll get in most of uh, the supermarket but if that is within your budget uh, keep going keep going so i i was uh, a little bit uh, disappointed because it seems that the stores are replacing what is food and stocking what is not food now that's a story for another day we'll go back to our 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 novel shake hands with the devil now um when i got remember i already informed you that earlier on i had gone to the abc to purchase my lesson and i actually have it here in the crucible with christ then i was thinking about the sufferings that people went through during the 1994 Rwanda genocide. There must have been some innocent people who suffered, and there must have been also proponents of the war who suffered. Overall, there was pain, there was, there, there was suffering, and there were losses. There are people who lost their property, there are people who lost their parts of their bodies, you know, hands, their limbs, mm -hmm. there are people who even lost their ears, there are people who lost their loved ones, there were losses, and there, there was pain. When I was going through the preface of this lesson guide, in the crucible, in the crucible with Christ, the author highlights some interesting lines that I could wish to share with you. He says that pain, suffering, and loss does not mean that God has abandoned us. What they mean is that even as believers, we now share in the common lot of fallen race. You and I possess the DNA of fallen race. We possess everything that a fallen, that identifies a fallen human being. And there's also a description that was given of Jesus here uh, that the creator, a man of sorrows, despised and rejected. You know, even him, after assuming the form of humanity, it is not that life became easy for him. 
as a human being life was difficulty for him until he was betrayed and finally crucified on the cross. There's something for us to learn from this preface. When we think about the ordeals of life that we face, we should not despair. We may face betrayal, we may face disappointment, just know that is part of human life. And then there was another story here uh, in the Shepherd's Crucible. This is a story by a lady called Sophie. Sophie must have heard this friend that she trusted so much. And it seems to me from the expression of her pain when the friend went around spreading um, you know, spreading uh, trying to taint her name Sophie was so much pained so it seems to me she may have shared almost 100% of her life with this friend of hers it's called human betrayal when we are betrayed she sobbed so much sophie sobbed so much she could not imagine how somebody she treasured could betray her have you ever been betrayed by someone you cared about someone you loved someone you cherished and let us not limit our minds to romance this could be family, betrayal by our parents, our guardians, betrayal by our siblings, betrayal at the workplace. Have you ever been betrayed? Now let's flip the coin. Have you ever betrayed someone that someone banked on you, someone entrusted their lives uh, into your hands, someone entrusted the secrets into your hands, and then when uh, when when things fell apart, you went around, you know, sharing the news with every person. Have you ever betrayed someone? This is something that we may, all of us, we may have uh, experienced or at one point participated in. But should we dwell there? I think we shouldn't. I think what we need to do right now is to soldier on and focus on improving ourselves so that we can stop betraying other people. And even if we stop betraying other people, it does not guarantee us that other people will stop betraying us. It is the nature of human life. And when you are desiring, when you are aspiring to be a good person, not everyone is aspiring. Uh, not everyone may have same aspirations. So Sophie, Sophie was betrayed. Betrayal is common to man. Betrayal is not the end of life. We may lament, we may curse, but finally we have to come into acceptance. If we have betrayed someone in, pa in, the, in the past, it is not something we can reverse, but we can focus on mending ourselves so that it does not your car in future if people have betrayed us that does not mean that it's a death sentence to us life gives us another chance yeah a name is very important to most people in fact to all people Imagine if someone is a thief 
and he passes somewhere and he is well known the police are looking for him the mob is looking for him and then on this fine day he snatches another lady's purse in public you know the mob is going to descend on him and he may not be like on this day as he has been in the days that have passed it is called human life but we have a chance to make things better now we dive further into um the shepherds uh, the shepherds uh, crucible i try to check the various definitions of the word crucible one is a physical one the other one is not tangible the first definition i was checking it with the uh, marian um uh, dictionary a crucible is an element that is used to heat substances at a higher temperature it could be thousands of degrees celsius for the human body our temperature is normally around 33 34 there 35 when it starts to get to 37.5 38 by the time it gets to 40 somebody may have already collapsed but here we're talking about the crucible i could term it as um infinity degrees celsius very hot now in the shepherd's crucible there was an image illustration of a staff you may call it a rod in the culture of middle eastern shepherds they have trained their sheep to follow them they lead from the front and the sheep follow them the purpose of the rod the purpose of the staff the primary purpose of the staff is not to hurt or harm the sheep but it is to confront the enemy that is coming to devour the sheep today we were looking at Christ as our shepherd and we based the discussion on the book of psalm chapter 23 I remember during my childhood days my mother used to recite this chapter of head as often as she got opportunity to me and my younger brother the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures He leads me beside the still waters and it goes on and on. Now when you read the breakdown when you read the breakdown of Psalm chapter 23 you will learn that Christ provides leadership to us he leads us sometimes we choose our own ways and we go astray we face trouble we cry to god he listens to us and brings us back on track god leads us as the good shepherd when we're talking about leading You don't lead something or somebody many times who uh, who knows the way. You lead someone who is willing to know the way. So the good shepherd is well intended to offer us the leadership that we need. No leadership 
is a compound term when we have our emotions messed up when we have our physical health messed up when we have our businesses messed up our professions and careers messed up we need leadership to come into the right path and only God can provide that we can bang on him to offer us leadership he also restores and when you 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 restore something you restore something uh, from a not so good state into a better state yesterday I was watching a uh, a clip by a gentleman from uh, California is called uh, he has an electronic business called not 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 something not fix yeah, not fix I don't want to say <laughs> not rift yeah it's uh, not something not fix so he was describing on how restoring an old house can be costly than even purchasing a new home or a new house. Now, the Good Shepherd restores us to the state that is desirable. It is common to man to desire comfort from time to time. When we lose loved ones, we need comfort. When the rains beat us, we need comfort. When we are losing our minds, we need comfort. He provides comfort for us. Unless you don't want it. But I think in our default settings as human beings, comfort is part of what we desire. And he has given us assurance of his goodness and his mercy. When human beings give us things, there's this common Swahili that goes, Ya kupimia, ya, ya kupimia na hewa, huh? ya kupimia mtu hewa. That does not happen with God. He is concerned about our welfare and wants it to be perfect 100%. Now, while we follow the Good Shepherd, He will lead us to the right destinations. How many times have we entrusted people with responsibilities? How many times have We've been entrusted with responsibilities, but we fail. That is common to man. But when we have the good shepherd, he is able to lead us to the right destinations. And while in that process, he is also able to help us to become the right people. You know, when we become the right people, then we become a positive influence, not only to ourselves, but also to our environment. And lastly, from here, do you have enemies? How do you deal with your enemies? That's another point that came across while I was listening to discussions Today, it's, uh, the elders were leading the discussions, and I had to be a keen listener. When the elders speak, you listen. You'll get something that can make your life better. It is not always wise to take matters in, into our own hands. And vigilance belongs to the Lord. No enemies continue to invent ways of ensuring that we do not progress 
they continue to devise ways to hold us down. But God, the God who is our creator, can give us power to overcome the vows of our enemies. Now the presence of God does not mean or does not erase the presence of enemies. As long as we live in this world, we'll have enemies. No matter how much we try to be at peace with somebody, with other people, there are people who are just, I don't know, I don't know whether, I, I really, I fail to understand. There are people who are naturally chaotic. They must find a way of getting into beef with someone. I, I really don't know the basis of their, their motives. I don't know, but we have such people. They can be chaotic for no reason at all. And these people are not very far from us. They're right there with us. They're the people we interact with every day. They're the people we call our siblings. They're the people we call our friends and so forth. Always know you will have enemies. We will have enemies. But when we are shielded under God's banner, there is no device that is fashioned against us that will destroy us. We may go through fire, but the fire will not consume us for God will be with us. There is no amount of fire. There is no furnace, no matter how intense it is that is too strong for God to contain. Maybe let me break it a little better for us to understand. Students try to pursue their studies and things are not clicking. Some people have worked hard maybe and graduated but no job is coming along. You're starting business and you're failing. There are no resources. The people you're working with are not performing. And some are taken hostage. You know, some people are, on, are, 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 uh, are in hostage hostage tunasema yani wameandikwa na tabu you know that's those are the kinds of furnace I'm talking about there is no furnace that is too strong for god we have read we have heard how god has always fought for his people even when his people run away from him still god fights for them i think there are situations in your life when you acted out of your mind for your selfish interests but still god protected you the god we believe in is the god who subdues furnaces so though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for his rod and staff, they comfort us. Now let's read that again. Though we walk through the shadow. When you walk through the shadow, it means it is not the real thing. Think about it this way. You have a tree here mahogany tree you know those trees are very heavy with um they, they, they're very heavy very big you you got a mahogany tree this side and then you have 
it is shadow on the other side. When you walk through the shadow, does the shadow of the mahogan harm you? No, it does not. I want us to get that sense. That we may go through trials, but they will not subdue us for God is with us. The waters may be deep. But God will hold us and we will not sink. One day, Christ has done miracles. And then he takes his disciples. They go over to the sea. Then the Savior must have been really exhausted, bearing a human body. Then he went to the under cabin to have some rest. Now the people, the disciples who are on this boat, they are experienced working with waves in the sea. But this time around, the winds were so strong. It is not something that they were used to. They were so intense that they could no longer contain it. Now I want you to imagine the anger with which they went to the under cabin to wake up Jesus. I don't know whether these were the exact words, but I imagine them getting onto Jesus and they're like, you're sleeping here and we're dying. Come on. And then the Savior only uttered a few, you know, a brief phrase. Peace, be still. And the storm was no more. Sometimes we're traveling with Christ in the, in the vessel and we forget and think that we are alone. When the sea waves roll, the tempests rage, we lose sight of the Savior. It will only take one word, one phrase. Because this Christ who was there in the time of the apostles is the same Christ who is today. The powers he possessed then, he still got the same powers today. May he speak to us and to our trials and to the tempest of our lives. And let's call upon him to only utter that phrase, peace, be still and it shall be well with us. The cases of psychological disorders and emotional stress are on the rise. It is therefore not a coincidence that we in the recent past have witnessed uh, an increase in the number of uh, people co committing suicide and people killing their husbands, killing their wives, killing their children. It is a sad state of affairs. In a society where many people have lost sight of the Messiah, have lost sight of the solution to our problems, it could be the time for us to keep our eyes on the Savior. There's nothing in this world that is sufficient to guarantee or to give us the peace that God can give. There are so many people who have resources, there's monetary resources, they have businesses, they have land, but they don't have children. Out here we celebrate them, but when they go back to their closed quarters, these people 
only God knows the agony in their souls. There are people who have food, lots of wheat, let's say, but they got no appetite. They can't eat. They have the food, but they can't eat. There are people who have children, many of them for that matter, but not even one seems to be on the right, in the right direction. There are people who have big jobs earning big money, but they are not, they are not happy with this life as it is. How many times have you read about people, renowned people, bank managers, store managers? Now those guys earn a lot of money, especially for these, uh, they, they're called uh, these big corporations or the FDEs. Oh, foreign, uh, they're called, uh, they're called, uh, the discumbents are established by foreign, uh, they're established by other parent companies. They are foreign direct investments. They earn a lot of money, but their lives are not happy. We read about them hanging themselves in the, uh, hanging themselves in the media. It is just in the recent past that we had one doctor claim the lives of his children and later he took, the, he took his own life. It is a sad state of affair. A time like this when we cannot 100% rely on professional help as much as it's important. Our only safe haven is if we can rely on the Savior. He is the only shepherd who will provide an answer to our issues. I want to read uh, a text here and then we will call it a night. Let me check. Uh, we, we are going to read from the book of, uh, no, we'll read two texts, one from the book of Psalm. Psalm, we want to read uh, chapter 46, should be verse 3. Let's see what it has for us. Um, getting there. We need to remind one another about these things. Do not die alone. Join such conversational spaces. Um, Psalm 46 1 reminds us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Who doesn't go through trouble in life? We have a promise. We all need refuge, we all need strength because we've broken down. Now, out here, People may only, people may see us smiling and laughing and maybe dress nicely, talking to them nicely. But we have our troubles. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof rob and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. No, a river is a source of life. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God and the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. 
she shall not be moved know when you hear about she that's a simple and so uh, simple uh, simple fly she shall not be moved god shall help her and that is right ali no god comes at the right time the heathen raged the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is a refuge come behold the works of the lord what desolations he hath made in the earth he makes wars to cease unto the end of the earth he breaks the bow he casts the spear in sunder he burns the chariots in the fire be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the heathen i will be exalted in the earth the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is with us so my good friends do not fear as we face tomorrow yes the price of ports are going up the price of education is going up many people are languishing in poverty loans interests are going up and so many things political turmoil and there seems to be no hope for us the good thing i like is god is not controlled by economy he is not controlled by the political environment he is an independent god and god's action is not limited by what the world is experiencing he can do the unimaginable we only need to prove that we have indeed put our trust in him and call him in our day of trouble which i think we are in our day of trouble unless things are working smooth 100% for you the rest of us are in trouble we need help and we need help from a sustainable source only god can do that for us now the last one we are reading from psalm 91 and we will read from verse 1 <coughs> sorry from verse 1 and we will read to verse verse uh, 11 let's read it together if you have your bible uh, psalm chapter 91 and i'm reading as you follow along with me he that dwells in the sacred place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say you and i we will say of the lord he is our refuge our fortress our god in him we will trust surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pest lens let's put a pause there some traps met by our enemies we have no idea like right now wherever people are seated in their houses outside somewhere we have no idea what our enemies are planning for us you could be working very hard to put your stuff together but somebody on the other side is also working very hard instead of concentrating 
on their life. This person is working very hard, coming up with ways to ensure that you do not progress. We may have no idea what our enemies are planning for us. But God, an all-knowing God, who is described as an omnipresent, omniscient, omnipresent, I remember those terms from our CRA, this God who knows what takes place in the dark corners under the roots where people think they're hiding, he will surely deliver us. These are not our words. It is God who has written this word, written by the inspired men of God. Therefore, let us have this confidence that the Lord is able and he shall deliver us. In fact, this is an affirmative statement. Surely he shall. There are no maybe. There are no maybes here. This is an affirmative statement. We are confident that he will do it for the Lord has spoken. Just to remind you that God is not man. God is not man. The fountain ministers acquire from Nairobi. I don't know whether, I don't know which university they were associated to. They sang a song that Mungu Sibi Nadam. Indeed, God is not man that he should lie. If he has spoken that he will deliver us, he will surely deliver us. Not only deliver us, listen to this. He says, He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. And I like to say something about his truth. When we study the scriptures, we learn that the word of God is the truth. You can get that in John 17, 17, where it's written that sanctify them by your word, for your word is the truth. We also learn that Christ is the truth from John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father except by me. And the psalmist also in 119 should be verse 1, 51 there. All your, commandments are, all your commandments are the truth. So we have every reason to believe and exercise our faith. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. In other words, around the clock, God has assured us of his protection. A thousand shall fall, um, no, uh, a thousand shall fall at the side and 10,000 at the right hand. There's a verse 6 there, you can read it. I mean, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at the side and 10,000 at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. At one time, at one time, there were soldiers surrounding uh, the servant of God, this man Elisha, and his servant, uh, the servant of Elisha was so worried, and then Elisha prayed unto God that God could you please open the eyes of this servant. When the servant, his eyes were opened, he saw thousands of angels who are with them. I hope that we shall live with this statement that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Those who are with us are stronger than our enemies. Sometimes um, the way God protects us, we may not see the clear picture, but God's ways, remember, are not man man's ways. Uh -huh. because you have made the Lord which is because you have made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high your habitation in other words um, 
you have solely uh, believed and trusted in God for your guidance, for your protection. That is what we need. That is what we need. For mm -hmm, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. This is God who is giving us this assur assurance. And the last uh, text in verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Well, uh, that's what we have. That is our discourse tonight. I hope that as we soldier on, as we, you know, we are starting a new week and some people are already starting their camp meetings, I hope we will strike balance between work and attending the camp meetings to learn. And to no, do not forget, don't forget, don't forget. The future may look blurry, but with our faith in God, the Lord shall make it clear one day at a time. Let us not give up our faith. Let us not give up our trust in God. It may appear that the Lord is delaying to answer our prayers or to respond to our concerns. Remember, all things happen for the good of them that believe in God. And when we read about all things, it does not specify it does not narrow down and say good things happen to or bad things happen to. It's an all-inclusive uh, terminology uh, giving us an insight that through, uh, through pain and joy, through day and night, through darkness, God will always be with us. Let us keep doing what we are doing. I mean, if it's fine, and if we, we are on track, let us not let God go. When Jacob is wrestling with God, when Jacob realizes that, hey, this is God, he says, he s Jacob, Jacob refused to let go. He needed his name. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Now today, our fiscal, and I mean the names by which we get our identity may remain, but the inward person can be transformed to be a totally new being, a new creature, far much better than what people around us knew or than what people around us know. Remember, it is not, it is our relationship with God that matters most and if we have it right with God then it can be much easier for us to square our differences and uh, and, 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 and live harmoniously with other people. That is it for today's conversation on Life Matters Sundowner. I wish all of us well as we start this week. May the Lord bless the work of our hands. And by the work of our hands, I mean we're not going to sit down and expect things to happen, expect some magic. We are going to put in the work that is required and should be hard work. Most people say work smart, not hard, but the reality is <laughs> that we should work hard and uh, it's only by working hard now by working hard uh, the, in the process of working hard it rewards us in smarter ways so let us not down our tools whatever your hands may find to do do it with your mighty do not take an opportunity for granted no matter how small it may be you don't know the bigger plan that God has in store for you and when you try and things fail to work out, take your time, consult with God. He will give you the proper direction on the way 
forward for those who are attending camp meetings this week we wish you the very best thank you once again my friends for continuing to rock with me maybe i want to check whether we have any comment over on over here let me see and then we can call it a wrap we can call it a day let me see what we have here um we have uh, thanks uh, dorothy Morai, you saying watching from this side my sabbath was enjoyable being the last sabbath of this quarter thank you very much i think that's all we have for today and once again thank you so much for the love thanks for keeping the show warm peace until next time peace we are gone